In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete your first upgrade to your 3D printer. Now, I'm definitely not one of those people who recommends upgrading everything on your 3D printer. 90% of the 3D printers that you can buy today work absolutely fine out of the box as long as you assemble them and maintain them correctly. For instance, this Ender 3 version 2 has been running as it came for over six months now and prints great. However, there is one upgrade that I believe it needs that should not only improve print quality, but will also enable me to print with a larger range of filaments. First, let me briefly explain why this upgrade is necessary. Non-direct drive 3D printers use a tube to guide the filament from your extruder to the hot end. This is called a Bowden or Bowden tube. The name comes from Bowden brake cables where a wire is pushed through a flexible tube. In the case of 3D printing, the wire is our filament. The filament is not only pushed through the Bowden tube but also pulled when the extruder wants to retract the filament to avoid stringing. On a PTFE lined hot end, the Bowden tube also goes all the way down to the back of the nozzle, so it's subjected to the same temperatures that the nozzle reaches. The standard white PTFE tube that most 3D printers are supplied with is only rated to about 220 degrees C. This is fine for PLA, but if you want to print with TPU, ABS, PETG or nylon, then you're going to run into issues. Now I have printed with all of those filaments except nylon with the standard Bowden tube and it does work. However, experience tells me that prolonged exposure to those temperatures will deform the end of the tube. This deformation can cause clogs in your hot end. The other downside to the standard white PTFE tubing is its internal diameter. As we all know, our filament is supposed to be 1.75 millimeters. However, the white tubing has an internal diameter of two millimeters. Why is this a problem, you may be thinking? Well, as we've discussed in other videos, any difference between the movement of the filament at the extruder stepper motor and the movement of the filament at the hot end is gonna give you inaccuracies between what the printer thinks it's doing and what it's actually doing. You may have heard that Bowden tube printers need higher retraction settings than direct drive printers and it's harder to print with more flexible filaments. This is the reason why. Imagine pushing uncooked spaghetti through a straw. Not too difficult. But try doing the same with cooked spaghetti and it's a different story. It's quite easy to see in this example that movement at one end is not transferred to the other end. The same thing, albeit to a lesser degree, is happening with your Bowden tube. The filament is able to move around inside the tube if there's too much room. The more it can move, the more your extruder has to move during retractions to get the effect it wants at the hot end. The only thing we can do to reduce the difference in movement at each end is to make the outer tube as tight a fit as possible and to make it as slippery as possible. This quick test shows that with one end of the filament fixed, I was able to move the other end by three millimeters. That directly translates to three millimeters of extra retraction distance you'll need over a setup with no movement. This is where an upgraded Bowden tube wins. This XS series Capricorn tubing is specifically designed for 3D printing with a smaller 1.9 millimeter internal diameter. It tolerates nozzle temperatures up to 260 degrees and has lower friction with your filament due to a secret high performance additive mix. There's a link below in the description to the exact item I bought and I'm using here. If I perform the same movement test on a length of Capricorn tubing, we can clearly see the difference. There's now only one millimeter. It's also clear to see how the Capricorn tube resists higher temperatures when we heat the two with a heat gun. Here are some quick back-to-back -back test prints with the exact same filament, G-code and printers. The only difference is the Bowden tube. As you can see, there are a few differences. My Ender 3 was reasonably well set up and my hot end is particularly well maintained, so I was never going to get particularly bad results with the standard tube. After switching to the Capricorn tube, there is a noticeable difference on PLA and PLA Plus with these little retraction tests. TPU is marginally better, but more tuning is needed here, really. The most noticeable difference, though, is in the surface finish of this TPU calibration cube. This particular filament has never printed well on my Ender 3, but it's always great on my CR10S Pro. I've played around with the slicer settings, but could never quite get any results on this machine. However, after changing only the Bowden tube, this Ender 3 now prints TPU as good, if not better, than the more expensive machine. I was surprised to see such an improvement in this area because retractions aren't really put to the test in the outer walls of a calibration cube. I imagine the improvements coming more from the filament having a smoother low friction route from the extruder to the hot end, allowing a more consistent extrusion. I didn't see the same change with PLA, but it wasn't bad to start with. The other great benefit to this upgrade is that it's very easy to perform. I'll demonstrate on this Ender 3 version too, but the process will be very similar on any Bowden tube printer. All you need to do is heat your nozzle to the filament printing temperature and remove your filament. Remove the clips on the pneumatic fittings and push the retainer clips in with a small spanner and pull the Bowden tube out at each end. On a Teflon lined hot end like this Ender 3, I'd advise removing the nozzle and cleaning out the hot end as shown in my hot end cleaning video. There's a link in the description below and at the end of the video. 
Now refit the nozzle, but leave it one full turn from being tight. If you have an all metal hot end, then you won't need to do anything to the nozzle as the tube doesn't go down that far. Now take your old and new Bowden tube and cut the new one to the same length as the one you've just removed. It is very important that you cut the ends as square as possible. If the end pushing up to the back of the nozzle isn't square, then you'll leave a void which can fill with filament and give you issues with stringing and clogs. The kit I've linked to below comes with a special cutter which helps you get the end nice and square. It also comes with replacement pneumatic fittings which are better than the standard Creality ones and probably deserve a video of their own. All we really need to know now is that they're probably a better quality than the ones that came on your printer and a part that I'd advise replacing every few months anyway. Push the new Bowden tube down through the pneumatic fitting into the still hot hot end until it pushes up against the back of the nozzle. Attach the retaining clip and then tighten the nozzle the final turn. Assembling this way ensures that there can be no gap behind your nozzle. Attach the extruder end by pushing firmly in and attaching the clip. You're now ready to feed your filament back in and get printing. If you want to see how to clean your hot end like I talked about in this video, then click here. If you want to see more videos on the Ender 3 version 2, click here. Thanks for watching.